Darcy, why are we getting that cake? Because it's the color is blue. Okay, so we got the cake. What else are we getting? We need more blue things. More blue things? Mm -hmm. All right, so we planned breakfast and then we forgot we didn't have any bacon or eggs. So now we're getting some bacon. We also got the blue cake. And then we're gonna make some breakfast for daddy. All right, so we're making waffles. We've got bacon, eggs. Happy Father's Day! Thank you. Darcy keeps calling it birthday, so she went in to get him, where is it? She said um, his favorite color is blue, which, is it blue? Yeah, kind of. Sure, okay. Yeah. Blue Tic Tacs. Very thoughtful. And she wanted 12 blue candles for his birthday, and I kept having to tell her that this is not a birthday, this is Father's well, Day. Well, she thought I was six years old based on the things she did. For... So she made this at school. It says, my dad's name is John. He is six years old. He is as big as people. He has brown hair and blue eyes. His favorite food is tacos. His favorite color is blue. He likes to go to work on his computer. For fun, he likes to go on a walk with me. My favorite thing to do with my dad is play toys with him. I love my dad. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm six, guys. You guys six didn't know that. I don't look very good for six. <laughs> kind of like a uh, Robin Williams Jack situation. Yeah. Those look delicious. So if there's anybody out there that is wondering what it's like to be a foster dad, it is not an easy thing to describe. Um, I was a foster dad for two months to a teenage girl and she went back with her family and that was my first experience of being in that role. I have two kids of my own, but being a foster dad is the same in a lot of ways, but it is a lot different in a lot of ways. So you have all the same responsibilities, uh, keeping the kids healthy, keeping the kids safe, like, you know, being the dad, but you have none of kind of like what you would expect as being a dad, you know what I mean? And you need to be okay with that. Your role as a foster dad is not to be their dad per se, you know what I mean? Not to be their father. You are sort of there for them anytime they need you for any reason whatsoever. And if they want you to be that dad and that father figure, they're going to show it. And they're, you know, they're gonna ask you in like small ways. But in my situation with my first foster daughter and my current foster daughter, their dads were in the picture. You know, they had relationships with their dads. Uh, so I'm not trying to replace that. I'm not trying to be their new dad. That's not what my role is. And I am perfectly okay with that. And I feel like a lot of uh, people, not just dads, but moms too, um, if you're thinking about fostering, you need to understand that. <clears throat> That's not your role. I feel like I've still been able to make connections with my foster daughters. My first foster daughter was uh, with us uh, for about two months, I think maybe three months before she um, went with some family. And our current foster daughter has been with us, gosh, I think the year anniversary is like a week away. It's pretty, it's pretty close, maybe two weeks away, it's been a year. 
And um, since we've had teenage girls, um, I'd say it's pretty fair that both of them pretty much right off the bat connected more with my wife. We kind of expected that. I was fine with that. I still get little moments here and there to connect with them, you know, especially the girl that's staying with us now. Like I would take her to visitations to see her parents and different things and pick her up and take her to school. Um, so we get to talk a lot, you know, having never parented a teenager, my kids are, are really young. My daughter is four and my son's only a year old. So uh, it doesn't feel like that long ago that I was a teenager. So I try to pick up on cues and, you know, kind of not really overstep. Uh, a lot of times, you know, if I'm picking her up from school or taking her to school, uh, if she's talkative, like I engage in conversation and I try to, you know, try to just talk about what she wants to talk about. And if she's, you know, sort of guarded and shut down and I'll ask her one or two things, she kind of gives me one word answers and I just let there be silence for the ride, which is totally fine with me. My parenting style is not very overbearing. Uh, it's not like, you know, this is my house. You're going to do what I say, like none of that. And my wife is the same way. Um, we're, we're not trying to be overbearing. Obviously, I think it's a case by case basis with the kids. Uh, our current foster daughter is just an amazing kid. It's easily the most responsible 15 year old I've ever known. And when I think about my biological kids, and if there was ever a scenario where someone else was taking care of them, I kind of ask myself, like, how would I want them to parent them if I wasn't able to do it? So I try to keep that in mind um, when I'm being a foster dad. Like, am I doing things that would overstep? Um, you know, I think a good example is not too long from now, probably, I guess, five, six months or so, maybe even sooner than that. Not too long from now, my foster daughter will probably start taking some kind of driving classes, learning how to drive. That's something that's really important that either, you know, a mom or a dad uh, would naturally like to teach their kids. So I, don't, I think it would be definitely overstepping if one day I said, hey, let's, let's go out and I'll teach you to drive, you know, like that's not cool. I think being considerate. Uh, with the biological parents and uh, experiences that they would like to do, you know, firsts that they would like to have with their, their child is something you got to keep in mind. So, um, yeah, I guess when it just comes down to it, if you want to be a foster parent, dad, mom, whatever, uh, go into it with the mindset of having all the responsibilities of being that parent for that child, but none of the recognition. And when I say recognition, I mean from that child, you know what I mean? So like you, you don't want to go into it expecting, oh, we're going to have this great bond and you know, they're just going to love me so much and all that. None of it is for you. It is all for that child. So it is a thankless job. You need to be fully aware of that and you need to be okay with it. When the likely scenario of that kid, you know, maybe not being appreciative of it, you're not let down because it's not about you. It's about that kid. So just keep that in mind, and if you already have kids of your own and you're thinking about fostering, just always think to yourself, how would I want a stranger to take care of my kids? How would I want a stranger to handle that situation? So just always try to put yourself in the shoes of the biological parent uh, because not only, I mean, obviously everything's about that kid, but it's about the parents too. Uh, the, parent, the biological parents are trying to uh, get things in order. They're trying to do what they need to do to get their kids back into their life. And you want to make sure that when that happens, it is a smooth, easy transition. Because if you keep those parents involved the whole time, you nurture that relationship, it's going to be a lot smoother when they go back. You don't want to be bad mouthing the parents because if, if it's just negative, 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 and then they go back, then that's going to be in the kid's head. It's just, it's just not a good situation. So I guess that's uh, my take on being a foster dad, kind of what that means to me. Mm -hmm.